Um, religion is widespread, at least historically, perhaps universal and human specific. So my question to you is, do you think religion or religious belief evolved in humans? And if so, did it confer an evolutionary advantage? As a... As a, as a Darwinian, I am um, among those who believes that anything that is very widespread in a species in some sense has an evolutionary advantage. It wouldn't be there if it didn't. So yes, I think the answer is that it probably does have an evolutionary advantage, but having said that, we have to be a bit careful about what we mean. Because very often, when biologists look at something and say, what's the evolutionary advantage of that? It turns out that they're asking the wrong question. It may be that what we're looking at is some kind of a byproduct of something else which has an evolutionary advantage, and we have chosen to focus our attention on the byproduct, which is not the thing that in itself has the advantage, but which is a consequence of the thing that has the advantage. And the example of this, I've got a whole chapter on this in The God Delusion, the, advantage, the, 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 the example that I use it, to introduce the idea of byproduct is the question why do moths commit suicide by flying into candle flames or into electric lights? Now, you could say, what is the Darwinian survival value of suicidal self immolation behavior in moths? And it would be pretty difficult to think of what the survival value of suicide is. However, it's the wrong question. Flying into candle flames is a byproduct of something else. And probably what it is is this. This may not be right, but this is at least a good theory for what, what's going on. Insects are well known to use distant light sources as compasses. Day flying insects use the sun as a compass, night flying insects use the moon or stars. The reason this works, uh, the, the reason it's a good thing to have a compass is it's a good thing to be able to fly in a straight line. Uh, it, do, it doesn't waste time and so on. Now, the reason it works is that celestial objects like the sun and the moon, being at optical infinity, the light rays from them are parallel, and therefore a simple rule of thumb in the brain that says, keep the light rays at an acute angle of, say, 20 degrees, will cause you to fly in a dead straight line. But only if the light source is at optical infinity, something like the moon. If the light source is a candle, then the light rays are not coming parallel from the candle. They're radiating out at close quarters from the candle. The rule of thumb, keep the light rays at, at an angle of 20 degrees to your, to your flight, will cause you to fly in a logarithmic spiral into the candle flame. So these moths are not committing suicide. They're, they're doing a piece of behavior which would be sensible for all the millions of years that, it, that were there when the only lights you ever saw at night were celestial objects at optical infinity. Now, I think that that's what religion is like. I think that religion is a byproduct of probably several psychological predispositions which in themselves have Darwinian survival value, but which have consequences parallel to the consequence of the moth flying to the candle flames, have consequences which probably don't have survival value. But just as the moth doesn't know that the candle flame is not at infinity but is close by, so those of us who have these psychological predispositions, which would have been a good thing in our ancestral past, may still be a good thing. The consequence of leading to religious behavior, which may not be a good thing, doesn't occur to us. I mean, the kind of thing I'm thinking about is a tendency to obey authority in a child. It's probably a good thing for a child to obey its parents, to believe its parents indeed, when its parents tell it things about the world because the child is too young to know a lot of important things about the world and would die if it ignored its parents' 
beliefs, it's parents' advice. So good advice, like don't jump in the fire, has survival value. But the child brain, just like the moth brain, has no way of distinguishing the good advice, like don't jump in the fire, from the stupid advice, like sacrifice a mongoose's kidneys at the time of the full moon or, to, or the crops will fail. So I suspect that, that, that religion may be a complicated set of byproducts of psychological predispositions, each one of which itself has an advantage, but the religious byproduct is either neutral or, well, I, I, we don't even need to say whether it has an, has an advantage, it doesn't matter. The Darwinian explanation is sufficient if we postulate that the original psychological predispositions uh, had Darwinian survival value. One more.